Hi, I'm Jonah, the Social Media Manager for Sports Reference, and this is StatHead Tutorials. In earlier tutorials, I've been going over how to use some of the different tools on our site, but this time I want to do something a little different. I'm going back to basics and explaining just what StatHead is and how you use it. I find StatHead's interface to be quite intuitive, but the first time I tried it, I'll admit I was a little overwhelmed by some of the options. So in this video, I'm going to give an overview of the basic things you need to know to be able to jump into any StatHead tool and start using it. If you've already run a few of these searches successfully, you probably don't need this video, uh, but if you're totally new to StatHead, this is a great place to start. That's why I'm calling this video Episode Zero, The Basics. When you log into StatHead, you probably have a question that you want to answer. So the first thing you need to do is figure out which tool will help answer your question. The way to know that is to think about what level of stat you're trying to look at. Um, if you're looking for season long or career stats, you'll use the season finder. Game stats are in the game finder and so on with individual plays, goals, streaks, uh, more, you know, that sort of thing. Usually this is going to be obvious, but in cases with overlap, uh, you may not be totally sure. If you want to look up what player had the most 10 strikeout games in a season, do you use the season finder or the game finder? It would be totally reasonable to think that that's in the season finder since you're looking for a season long leaderboard. But you have to think carefully about what level the stat is that we're actually looking at. Is it a game level stat or a season level stat? Uh, it's the game since you're looking for 10 strikeout games. So you'd want to look in the game finder to find the answer to that question. Uh, don't worry if you don't know this at first. Uh, with some experience, you'll be able to go exactly where you need to every single time. Uh, and even at first, uh, you'll find that a lot of questions can be answered by multiple tools. Uh, so there really are no wrong answers here. And there's a number of ways to find what you need. Once inside, nearly every tool has the same basic layout. On desktop, there's a menu on top and then another on the side. In mobile, you'll just see one long menu. In the center, you'll see the results. Every single tool uh, is already set up to show a default search. That gray bar on top that says current search, that'll show you uh, the parameters of the search being displayed. So in this case, you can see the default search in the hockey season finder is the most goals in a single season. Let's look at these sections one by one. Uh, first, I wanna look at the search criteria. These are the parameters that you'll use to set up your search. Uh, basically, this is where you put in the question that you are asking. Uh, many of these criteria have these white drop-down boxes. If you click on them, you'll see a menu of options that you can choose from. For example, if you click on season, you'll see every single season that we have stats for. You can set a beginning season in the first box and an ending season in the second, and StatHead will limit your search to just that range of years. You can also if you want to look at one year, pick the year in the first box and then click the red two button and it will automatically fill that in in the second box, giving you a range of just one season. Other criteria have buttons instead of drop downs. Uh, these are cases where there may be fewer options. So for example, uh, here you can choose between regular season stats and playoff stats just by clicking the button. These options on top have light gray boxes over their titles, but if you scroll down, you'll see some with dark gray boxes. These are what we call the search filters. These filters are separated by category, uh, and then there will be a few examples after the category name to help clarify what exactly they mean. Uh, here, for example, statistical filters are stats, uh, while biographical filters are details about the players themselves. If you're still unsure what they mean or what would fit into which category, the easiest thing to do is to just click on them. Uh, you'll see the drop down with the full list of options for each filter type. Uh, if you see one that you want to add to the search, just click on it and a filter option will appear. Some of these options will have the drop down menus I was talking about before. So for example, when I clicked on birth countries, you can see that there's a drop down list of every single country where we have a player uh, from there in our database. Others will have buttons uh, like handedness for you to pick left or right. There's also a third type of filter that's a little trickier if you've never seen it before. Uh, to show you what I mean, I'm gonna click on goals and you'll see that you get something that looks like this. There's a drop down with three options in a blank box. First of all, those drop down options mean greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or equals. 
Uh, to use these filters, you just need to know uh, what exactly you're looking for. Uh, and then type the number into the box. So if you want to see all seasons with 25 or more goals, you'd select greater than or equal to and then type 25 into the box. If you wanted all seasons with 25 or fewer goals, change it to less than or equals to. If you want exactly 25 goals, just go with the equal sign, 25 in the box, and you're good to go. You can add as many criteria as you want to a query, and in fact, you should do that to get the most out of StatHead. If you add too many criteria and create a search that no player matches, it's really no big deal. You'll just get a result telling you that no one matched the search, and you can uh, adjust it from there. If you add a filter by mistake and want to remove it, just click the red Remove button. And if you've set up a ton of filters uh, and you have too many and you just need to start over uh, from the default, just click Clear All under the Get Results button and it'll get rid of all of them. Once you have your criteria set up, you can change the order that the list appears in by using the Sort By dropdown. You can usually sort by any statistical filter as well as options like Age and Year. And you can also choose Ascending or Descending order. This gives you the ability to see stuff like the last player to accomplish a feat, or the youngest, or the oldest. If you want to see the player with um, the fewest steals, but at least 30 home runs, stuff like that. You can do that very easily using this sort by feature. In addition to the search criteria, uh, most StatHead tools have a bar on the top with options for different types of queries to run. The other videos in this series will go more in depth into these options, since they vary by tool. but for now, what I just want to encourage you to do is experiment with these. Seeing the results they produce will help you understand what to use them for and, and when might be a good time to use them. Additionally, each option contains a brief example to help explain what the search option can do. So once you've set up your search and run it, you'll get a results table. These tables are the same as the ones hosted at every sports reference site, baseball reference, basketball reference, all of them. Uh, and they have many of the same features. You can resort the tables by clicking a column header, uh, and then it'll change the order uh, to go by that column header. You can click on player or team names, and they'll take you to their respective player or team pages. You can hover over a column header and get a brief definition of the stat. And you can use the share and more feature to edit and share the table. Uh, and lastly, speaking of sharing these tables, we've set up a way for you to share the results of your search with other people, even if they don't have a StatHead subscription. Just click the red button that says click for URL to share with others, and you'll get a tiny URL. Click the copy to clipboard button, and then paste it into any blog post or tweet or text message or email, however you want to share it. All right, so those are the basics of using StatHead to set up and run a search. Uh, however, in my opinion, the best way to learn more about StatHead is by using it. Um, if you sign up for an account, you can get a one month free trial to see for yourself the most powerful sports research tool on the internet. If you want to go more in depth into what the different StatHead tools can do, watch the rest of the videos in our StatHead tutorial series. And as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email us or contact us on social media. That's all for this edition of StatHead Tutorials. Thanks, and I'll talk to you again soon.